Unfortunately, Boston Lloyd has passed away, I believe, uh, yesterday or today. It's sad news for his family, for his young child. Uh, I'm sure it's unexpected. Apparently, he was found unresponsive. He collapsed in his kitchen at home after coming back from exercising, training. We know that Boston had end-stage renal disease. He said stage five disease, which is the, the end stage. We also know that Boston was not apparently on hemodialysis or discussing with the physicians to uh, require transplantation, renal transplantation. And what happens is when you're in the end stage of kidney disease, you have problems managing your electrolytes and the key electrolyte is gonna be potassium. It's very common and classic that unfortunately towards the end of end stage renal disease, people require dialysis because of potassium. Potassium levels go up too high. It's called hyperkalemia and they go into cardiac arrest. The heart won't just stops pumping. So apart from what people are saying that are not physicians, he didn't have a heart attack, most likely, or that he may have, he may have, certainly a 29 year old man with the things he's done. I'm not here to put him down, <laughs> it's not what this is about, but you go into asystole, so it's cardiac arrest, the heart just stops pumping, he collapsed. So <clears throat> that's the mechanism of action for why he died, apparently, apparently. We all know that Boston was incredible, very uh, in your face, honest guy, and we wanna commend him for that, right? So I remember 10 years ago, um, in my days, my early days of media, Boston connected with me and he was a great guy, you know? Behind the scenes, he's like, Doc, we're gonna get into it. I know you're gonna hammer me, I'm gonna hammer you back. And he did, we had a radio show. Some of you early guys may know and may actually hate me because of this. Some guys hate me because of how I treated Boston Lloyd on that one show, where he talked about steroids and what he was doing in his experimentations and that he really had no data that it was really gonna be that dangerous and so on and so forth and he's gonna do it and there's a right way to do it and all these things. And I hammered him, you know, and I, I being, I guess, the older guy at that time, even then, obviously now, and I hammered him hard and I, I wasn't very nice to him and I do apologize uh, to him uh, late and I apologized to him even subsequently and to his family. I never wanted to be seen as some hardcore bombastic physician. I don't want that, that's not gonna work. And I've realized that and even I've learned that's not a way to do it. There's not a way to, to tell people what to do. So. Boston was pretty hardcore, man. And a lot of people now are gonna say, Boston's 29, he's, he's, he passed away. Obviously from the complications of what he did, but they're gonna say he was really extreme, super extreme, and that's what happened. And I agree with that. But how extreme was he? So what did he do? He, he will tell you that this is not from steroids. His kidney disease was not from steroids. It was from a peptide called Adipotide, A-D-I-P-O-T-I-D-E. He did a lot of testing on himself, self-experimentation, which is, you know, risky, and he did it, and he knew the risks, you know, and here we are. So he did a lot of DMP, everyone knew that, you know, and he would talk about it. I think, I know actually on Dave Palumbo's show, not long ago, when he was diagnosed with the kidney disease, supposedly after using this adipotide, uh, peptide, which he was very particular, the steroids did into it to me, guys, it was this one particular peptide. Now, I'll hold your thought on that for a minute. So he took a lot of different agents, obviously. He, he did a lot for himself. And, you know, even Dave was telling him, slow down, you know, go see some doctors and, you know, let's try to cure this. And he said he was going to push forward and, and so on and so forth. So whew, it's what he did. And um, it's sad because, again, condolences to his family and, and to his wife and his son. It's going to be tough, you know, so a little boy lost his daddy and I'm sure he was a great dad. So he did anabolic steroids. We know that on top of a lot of other complicated drugs. Today's video now is to learn from this and I want to talk about kidney disease and what can happen. 
even steroid users, believe me. So it'll probably take more time. Not everyone has kidney disease from steroids. You could see I have a playlist with eight videos just about steroids and kidney disease. And you know, it's very complicated. Not all doctors understand it. Not even all nephrology doctors that are kidney doctors understand it. It's mainly focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, FSGS. And you could pick it up early. <clears throat> you could pick this up, I promise you. You could pick this up early. I have so many men in different stages of kidney disease. From just the beginning, you know, the stage one to three, and then even into the stage four to five. And then I have tons of guys in dialysis, different types of dialysis, and I have tons of guys that have received kidney transplantations. And there's a, there's a lot of multifactorial, there's a lot of factors. It's multifactorial. There's, it's a multitude. It's the moon's lineup, as I say. There's genetics. It's, of course, it's the drugs. Of course, it's your blood pressure. Of course, it's other medical issues that you may have. And then getting older, how many people that are 75 have chronic kidney disease? Chronic, most do. Most 75-year-olds, actually, if you look at their kidney in detail, they're going to have what's called stage 3 chronic kidney disease. You can verify that. Older people that are old, that are 75 to 90 you know, that it's, un, it's not uncommon that they have chronic kidney disease. Why? Because they've lived a long life. The kidneys are very delicate, not to mention is the heart and all your organs and your brain, things are delicate, they wear out. So when you do steroids and not to mention other esoteric peptides and you stress your body, it's going to take a toll on you. I know you guys know that. So here's what I'd like to present today. What can you do if you're on steroids and you're concerned for your kidneys? I'm devoting next Tuesday night on the app the whole time. I'll even go for two straight hours. The meetings usually run an hour, maybe over. I'm going to devote two hours onto just kidney prevention. And of course, steroids, not steroids, we're going to do this. So what can you do if today you're a young man, you're maybe on steroids and you are concerned for your kidneys? Consider not doing steroids, please. If you're in the early stages of steroid use and you're, you, you're not to the point where you require testosterone and, and you could get off steroids, please try to get off. Watch my videos on that. If you have concerns for anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism, transition to testosterone. I've been on testosterone 30 years and I'm not here to show off and I'm not better than anyone, but I'm a physician, so I drive the car pretty well for my own body. And I could tell you that the heart and the kidneys are very, very particular to me. And with my care and with good luck and everything else, and I didn't do that many steroids, but I did enough to shut myself down to require testosterone for life. Testosterone is not renal toxic. Testosterone, even a little bit, probably a little bit more than the physiologic. If you watch the blood pressure, if you watch your heart and all my stuff, you could really protect your heart and kidneys. Please do not do the esoteric drugs like Boston did. I would think he would agree with me. Don't do that. The peptides, I'm not here to put down the peptide sales guys and all the money, all these, these people. I, I'm not here to do that. Money is great. Make money, sell things. Great. DNP and all these drugs. But if go old school. <laughs> Try to go old school. Maybe just testosterone. You, th you see the bodybuilders that are still around today that actually can look pretty damn good, that are my age, maybe younger, older. They've backed off the gas pedal, and, and they have good luck, and, and they've watched their heart and kidneys. I could promise you that. What to do? Here's what you can do beyond th those general recommendations. Get that history and physical. Again, get on my app. It's there for you. You have a whole history and physical that's there virtually, and you have access to me every Tuesday night in the man-to-man -man meetings and you could ask questions. It's super, uh, it's super great. It's, there's no censorship. No one's gonna, you're not gonna get in trouble. It's a beautiful place. It's an open place. It's a safe place for steroid users. I've made a safe haven for, for men on steroids to come. And it's not medical advice. It's medical information. I'm very careful with that. Check your vital signs. Blood pressure is gonna be key. 
it's going to be a, 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 apart from the acute toxicities, which maybe played a role, obviously, with Boston, it's going to be the hypertension. You want to keep your blood pressure very close to less than 120, less than 80. For just general people that end up in dialysis with end-stage kidney disease that have not done steroids, blood pressure, blood pressure, blood pressure, and diabetes. So again, but you guys are young, so you don't worry about this, but you should look if your blood pressure is anything more than 130 over 90 or high 80s, you're going to want to deal with that. As far as the steroid use, of course, your salt, your diet, your exercising, you know, having a great life, living a great fit life, lifestyle changes. And then blood pressure medicines, I've been on them for decades, little baby doses, and it doesn't hurt me, doesn't slow me down. I feel great. It, it, it helps your sex life. It helps your erections. Come on, guys. And this is all, it's all generic. The medicines are dirt cheap for the most part for blood pressure medicines. They're all dirt cheap. They're all off patent. So you want to get involved with that with good doctors. And this is why I provide the app. We talk about blood pressure medicines all the time. Next, number two, labs. Check your labs. For the kidney, it's going to be the basic metabolic and the comprehensive metabolic. Looking at the, the creatinine levels in the, the blood, urea, and nitrogen. This is important, guys. But if you're muscular and if you take creatine supplementation and you go to the lab and you're one three or one five even, and if it's on the edge, do you have kidney disease? Determining that may be difficult. See my videos. Get a cystatin C. Cystatin C. Capital C is in cat. You'll see, you'll see my videos where that's how doctors that are internal medicine doctors and not even just nephrology doctors, they can determine do you have the beginning of kidney disease that's going to hurt you later? Do you have stage three kidney disease or, or one or two? I pick this up all the time. Check your urine. Get a urinalysis and look for protein. If you have trace protein or one plus protein, I'm begging you that that's not a good sign. And you can go to a doctor and assess, do you have the beginning? Kidney disease doesn't acutely happen. Of course it does. There's acute renal failure. Beyond acute renal failure, everyone goes into kidney disease very slowly and steadily. Steroid users, FSGS, look for protein. Don't take too much protein. Of course, don't take too much steroids. Watch your vital signs. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These are key. Again, in a part with the peptide that Boston did, DMP and a bunch of other drugs that he probably, he said he was testing on himself for years. The renal toxic, NSAIDs, Motrin, Aleve, Ibuprofen. These are these drugs. They're all over the counter. They work for, for joint. You train hard, you get achy. Who doesn't? If you live on too many of these drugs for too long, when the moons line up with too much protein, with kidney disease starting, hypertension, and again, the steroids, you're going to get into a condition of chronic kidney disease. Please understand this. It's very complicated. I've been looking at this for years and years and years. Look at the playlist. Lastly, look at my videos on the playlist, the eight videos that we did. And you can get an understanding from case studies. Most kidney disease, if you have kidney disease, guys, if you do have it, will be later in your 40s. I see it with bodybuilders, and the bodybuilders that are older, that are my age, you don't know what their kidney function is. You don't know if they have chronic kidney disease. Most actually will, and that's why they're very careful, and they're very small now. See, they've shrunken down, and they've changed their diets. I'm telling you, I've taken care of a lot of these guys. It's a wake-up call. So I hope this really helps, and I hope this doesn't offend anyone that I'm being offensive. Of course, my condolences go to Boston's family. His son, again, it's another death of a young man that, that leaves behind a loved one, a child, not to mention his wife or his mom and dad and the family. It doesn't have to be, guys. Think really deep in yourself. Is it worth it? You can do testosterone. You can train hard and be super strong. You can. You can watch your vital signs. You can even take medicines to protect yourself. I recommend them all the time. Is it worth it? Who are you? What risks do you have? You need to figure this out for yourself. So thank you so much. 
Let's get a lot of comments, guys. Let's keep the comments very positive. Please don't go into the past where, where Boston and I didn't get along. I don't want to go into that. It's ridiculous. It's not, it's not going to be good for his spirit or, or your spirit. Thank you so much.